Here we are with some home movies I shot at Rolly Brooks place in Torreon, Mexico. And Rolly is the guy who is basically responsible for you being able to see this featurette. When I started this project, uh, somehow I had decided from the very beginning that the film should open and end at the Hacienda location of the Wild Bunch. But sitting here in Germany, some 10,000 miles away, I just couldn't find out where it was. But then I met Rolly in the internet and he found Hacienda for me. He also invited me to his place and we then drove to the desert to film the location. You have everything done that you have to do today. We started our first trip to the Hacienda on November 21st, 2002. From Torreon to Peras, it is about 100 miles, and deep in the nearby desert, we would find the Hacienda. The hacienda is a few miles from the little village Sienega del Carmen, which gave the hacienda its name. And the area there is a bit rough, and I'm not sure whether Sam Peckinpah would have reached the location with the Chevy Corvette that he drove in the 1960s. Back in 1968, Warner Brothers had to bring in electricity, water and supplies for the big cast and crew that shut there for many weeks. But that area wasn't always that dry. Actually, the hacienda had been a binary for many decades. The nearby town of Paras is still famous for its good wine. But some 90 years ago, an earthquake destroyed the natural water supply of this area here, and the hacienda and its wine were history. Around that same time, Pancho Villa fought here during the Mexican Revolution. So when we later found some rusty bullets and shells, we couldn't tell whether they originate from the filming of the Wild Bunch or the actual bloody battles Pancho Villa fought here. Here it is. was the, the editor, the main editor on that picture, and he was hired and went to Mexico, and after two or three weeks of work, he was complaining to Sam that he wasn't getting enough close-ups. And Sam, in a typical fashion, said, well, here's a camera, go shoot him yourself. And uh, so he suddenly became a second unit director for a, a period of time on the picture. 
dailies were piling up and nobody was working on the editing of the film. And they called and asked if I could go to Mexico and help on the picture. The first thing he wanted me to cut was the scene where the general has cuts the angel's throat with a knife. And so, having only worked on television up to this point, I very seriously censored the, <laughs> the material. I didn't think that, it, I thought it was too rough. He said, well, you're not supposed to censor my films. He said, I shot that with three cameras, uh, two slow motion cameras. And, and he said, I want to see all three angles on the screen. And we just keep taking a frame out here and a frame out there until uh, the momentum was the way we wanted it. And I don't think uh, anybody has really successfully used slow motion since then. It took to shoot the final gunfight in the Wild Bunch, it was 19 days. Sam shot almost all of that final sequence with uh, at least three cameras, and often five cameras. And um, only one would be running at normal speed. The rest were various slow motion speeds. When making a Western, such as The Wild Bunch, I was not consciously making a Western in quotes. I was merely commenting on our times, which unfortunately has become all too true. not the technique that I'm interested in, the effect on the audience. The audience was pulled into the screen and involved with the characters. At the end, you, you love them, no? <laughs> and uh, so I think the Wild Bunch here, they did what they want, no? Finally, and they had very good moments, and, and you can see all that in the film, and you can feel, no, the... All the pleasures of, of, of Mexico. Here in Mexico, time doesn't exist, no, and more in these kind of places, no, that we're in the middle of nothing in a hacienda. So, of course, Mexico can give you that feeling of, of, of no time, of, of no frontier, of that you can do whatever you want. Uh, Mexico was a, a very special place for my father. And here, in this location of the Wild Bunch, uh, I can feel uh, why my father loved uh, this place. So my father was like a little kid, no, here doing his films and working and that was his, his passion and, and I think uh, here you can have like this feeling, no, I can imagine him here on, on this set. <laughs> Everything was his career, no? And like a genius, he was completely involved in his films, and his films were like his babies, I remember he said once. And so we, ca we have to understand him, no? I mean, 
that was what made him feel alive because otherwise he he wouldn't be some pecking pan no Bill Holden Ernest Borgnine Ben Johnson Warren Oates Strother Martin it become important to you Action does not work without people without characters Action for its own sake I think is crap when he passed away because uh, I had lost a good friend, I felt. His films will live forever, I'm sure, because, well, you know, he, he thought, and he knew, and he felt, and he, he got what he wanted, you know, by, by just doing. Mm -hmm. 